Hi, uh, today I'm going to talk to you about caution and common words. Now, um, I want you to realize that rooted in language, we came up with this phrase, phrase caution and common words. Um, that's our doing. Everyone out there is trying to find a good way to describe um, how kids need to learn words that we can't really um, easily explain at these early levels in terms of phonics. And we used to call these sight words. I know you've heard me say this a number of times, but the, the term sight word is really a misnomer. People used to think and believe before we had functional MRI research and all the other kinds of brain, high-tech brain research that is going on right now. People used to believe that when we learn to read, that what really was happening is we were kind of memorizing what words look like. And unfortunately, across America, kids are spending hours and hours and hours of instructional time flipping through words and trying to look at what and trying to memorize what they look like. And some kids are very good at this and they look initially like they're doing really well, but actually it doesn't take very long grade level wise before they can't memorize every word that's out there. Um, I know if I handed you some kind of legal document right now that had a lot of terminology. Oh, here's a better one. If I handed you a prescription bottle and you were trying to read the name of some drug, you've never seen that word before. It could have 15 syllables to it for all you know. Um, and what do you start doing? You start trying to use your phonetic strategies, your sound processing strategies, your syllable knowledge, your word structure knowledge, your sense of prefixes, suffixes, and what letters represent what sounds, and what are your vowel options, right? There's all this information that comes into play when you try to decode a word. And we also do a lot of like flexible thinking, like, well, let we try the word this way, and then we can't get our mouths around these big, long words. And we've all done this when we've been trying to read the name of some new drug, right? So your new learner, we're at the gaining st skills stage here. We're really just moving beyond brand new learning of what are these sound to letter connections. And what we don't want is to constantly be teaching in a way that's not methodical, that's not explicit, that doesn't allow kids to pick up any patterns. No, we want to teach in a way that helps them pick up patterns. That's why we start with phonics. They're picking up patterns of the way these sound to letter connections are happening. But as you know from trying to read our text and our stories, when we control text and we leave out all these non-phonetic words, all of a sudden sentences are limited, they're awkward. Here's the thing, if you like word study, our oldest words are often our most common words. Our oldest words came into the English language and they have evolved over hundreds, thousands of years. And the thing that changes the fastest is how we pronounce things. So, but spelling has changed too. I mean, there actually in history has been letter shifts, right? I mean, WH words used to be HW sounds. It wasn't even WH sounds. It used to be HW sounds. And then the H was getting dropped out. But the spelling gurus preserved it. But we were only pronouncing W, so they switched they switched the, the order. I mean, crazy stuff has gone on that's made sense at the time. But English is huge. It has tons of words. And these oldest words are often the ones that are showing up on our caution word list. It's actually fun and exciting, except we're trying to teach new learners, right? And they're trying to figure out how to spell. So what we decided is we didn't want to use the phrase 
caution or uh, sight word anymore. And we used to use the phrase in our uh, wand before it was remodeled. We also used the phrase red words because these were like red alert words. But we decided to change that to caution and common because the truth is every caution word that starts out a word that you had a hard time spelling became a common word for you. Well, maybe not everyone. Clearly, some of those drug names have not, right? If you only see them once in a while. But ones we see all the time, right? Tylenol, acetophetamine, right? Those can roll off the tongue, even if we maybe sometimes forget how to spell them, right? So what we want you to realize is for your student, depending on their skill level, every word that starts out on a caution word card Honestly, once they gain that word form memory, that fast word recognition, it's not, and they remember how to spell it, it's not a caution word for them anymore. It's just a common word for them. So we decided we wanted to have this distinction that some words are following expected phonetic patterns. And let me just qualify here. Phonetic patterns that your child has learned. They, we're calling them common words because we want kids to know that when you go to sound these out, they're going to follow patterns that you expect. But then there are going to be words that follow patterns that may in fact be very common patterns. This Y ending a syllable and taking on a long I sound is actually a pattern we see pretty consistently, but a brand new reader just gaining skills hasn't seen it yet. So we are working on how to take these words that we need to get in their vocabulary. We need to get it into their reading. We need to get it into their writing and do it in a way that isn't going to undo all the good phonics pattern stuff we've been working on. And what you are going to see in Rooted in Language, and this is a promise from me, is how we handle these words will also evolve. They've evolved since I had the wand. They've even been un undergoing an uh, evolution from beginning of Pinwheels 1 to Pinwheels 3. Because we will follow the research and we will try everything on our students and we will bring you the strategies at the moment we're publishing it that are the strategies that we know we should bring you, bring to the table, okay? So when I talk about how you first learned to do things one way and now we're doing more of it this way, I want you to understand why. This is the way um, good education and good teaching works. And that's one of the reasons we want videos too. So we have opportunity to have another way that we can update you and express to you um, what's going on and how we are evolving in how we teach. We want to be good teachers and good teachers want to learn all the time how to be good teachers. Good parents want to learn all the time how to be good parents. And, you know, as a wife, I want to learn all the time how to be a good wife, how to be a good grandma how to be a good, you know, uh, co-worker. This is what growth looks like, okay? And we're all about growth here, reading and writing growth too. So I'm going to take you through some of what we're doing with Caution and Common Words and why. And I want you to just embrace this and know our goal is we help our kids develop word form memory. So one of the things I've been writing about in Pinwheels 3 is more and more and more research right now is coming out saying that we really have to make sure kids are not only knowing these letters, because knowing the letters actually research shows matters too. Ugh, we can't leave anything out. We are multi-processors. We come at words from all different angles. That's why we call this pinwheels, because you got to know everything about a word, right? But we also know that being able to map the sound to the letter you write on the paper is what helps develop 
fast and accurate word form memory, word form memory that you also need to be a good speller. So we got to have, have be good sound processors and you hear it all the time. So that's why we started working on this sound mapping with our caution and common words as well.